In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to create a realistic golden hour effect, making it look like your photo was taken during the hour shortly after sunrise or before sunset, when sunlight is warmer and softer. This particular technique will work on indoor shots. If you'd like to follow along with us, you can download the project files in the video description. The first thing you'll need to do is add a color adjustments layer, which applies color adjustments to all the layers below it in a composition. We'll use a temperature slider to make this photo warmer. Move it to around 60% for this photo. In your own photos, you'll need to pay attention to how warm the photo is already and adjust the temperature based on that. Because light is less intense during golden hour, we'll need to adjust the lightness too, reduce the exposure, highlights, shadows, and others. When editing your own photos, you'll need to use your judgment here a little too, although usually you'll be moving most of the sliders here to the left. Lastly, increase the saturation and vibrance a little. Next, we'll need to create some shadows. This is the key to this technique. We'll actually create some light falling through windows, so the rest of the image will appear to be in the shadows. First, choose a shape tool and set the fill color to white. Now, click the canvas to add a shape. Then, set its width to 950 pixels and its height to 1950 pixels. To move layers while using the shape tools, you can drag them while pressing and holding the command key. Drag this rectangle to the left side of the image. Once you've done that, press the Command-J keyboard shortcut to duplicate this layer and Command-Drag the copy to the middle. Duplicate this layer again and Command-Drag it to the right. Now, choose the Arrange tool and select all the layers together by clicking each of them while pressing and holding the Command key. Next, click the Distribute Vertical Centers button. Then, drag the layers to the center of the image. Now press the U key to choose the shape tool again. Draw a thin vertical rectangle and set its width to 50 pixels. Now press the V key to choose the arrange tool. Drag this vertical layer so its center aligns with the center of the larger rectangle. Then press the Command J keyboard shortcut to duplicate this layer. Drag it just like before so it snaps to the center of the middle rectangle. Finally, press the Command-J keyboard shortcut one more time and drag the last copy to place it in the center of the last rectangle. Select all the larger rectangles in the layer sidebar, Control-click them, and choose Unite. Once you've done that, select this united shape along with all the smaller rectangles, Control-click one of them, and choose Subtract. Now press the U key to choose the shape tool again and draw a thin horizontal rectangle, setting its height to 50 pixels. Select it together with the united shape, control click the layer sidebar and choose subtract shapes. Right now, if we imagine the windows just to the left, outside the frame of the shot, the light falling through those windows wouldn't be in perspective, so we'll need to fix that. Press the Command T keyboard shortcut to turn on the transform tool. Then choose the skew mode and adjust the shape like this. Next, we need to cut out the parts of the light that should fall behind certain objects. For this photo, that'll be the lamp. To see what's behind the shape layers, reduce its opacity to around 25%. Now to cut out certain parts of the light, we'll use the pen tool to draw some shapes that will subtract like we did before. To select the pen tool, press the P key on your keyboard. First, let's trace the edges of the lampshade. Press the Escape key to deselect any currently selected shapes and turn off the fill layer style for now to make it easier to trace objects. By the way, if you're new to the pen tool, you can check out our tutorial on the vector tools for beginners. Okay, now let's start tracing the lamp by adding some vector points. Once you've finished tracing the part of the lamp in front of the imaginary window lights, click the first point you added. Okay, now trace the dark part of the stand because no light would fall here either. Next, select all the shape layers, control click one and choose subtract shapes. 
The light should be more intense closer to the windows we've just created, so we'll need to fade the shapes using a gradient mask. First, add a mask to the rectangle layer. Then, choose the gradient fill tool by pressing the G key on your keyboard. Make sure you've chosen a black to white gradient, and with the layer mask selected, draw a gradient from the right side of the image diagonally up to the left. The last thing we'll need to do is soften the edges of the shadows, and we'll do that using the Effects tool. Press the F key to select it. Then click to select the rectangle layer and add two blur effects, a Gaussian blur and a disk blur. Set the radius of the disk blur to 25 pixels and the radius of the Gaussian blur to 20 pixels. Finally, in the layer sidebar, change the blending mode of the rectangle layer to overlay. And that's it. We've created a pretty convincing golden hour shot from a pretty standard indoor photo. If you want to be the first to know about new Pixelmator Pro tutorials as soon as we publish them, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget that you can also check out our profile page to find other tutorials that will help you master Pixelmator Pro. Thanks for watching.